Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this logo, which is filled with typography. And it's something that you would see back in the old days when people used typography to create compositions. So today we're going to be learning about layout design. We're also going to be learning how to use the certain tools inside of Adobe Illustrator to create these layouts and to have your logo in them. I'm also going to talk about where you can actually put these logos, where they can go into certain products lines and how they would fare in the real world. So if you're someone who loves vintage design, someone who loves the way it used to be, then stick around, watch to the end of the video. And just before we get into it, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes where you can learn anything from design, hand lettering, cooking, painting, drawing, anything really in the creative industry that you want to learn, it's on there. These classes are taught by the professionals where they can teach you what they know from expertise and through their own experience. If you want to try Skillshare for completely free and check out some courses that I've got linked down below that have helped me, click the link down below where you can, if you're one of the first thousand people, try it out for two months. And if you carry on with Skillshare, it's only $10 a month. So it's not actually that much for the amount of content that you get. All right. So the first thing about vintage logo types and creating compositions is that we've got to have a few principles in place before we do it. The first one, the most obvious one is symmetry and balance. If you're like me and you struggle coming up with compositions from the deep recesses of your mind, you can use shapes to do this. One of the best ways of doing it for me is I like to do it in squares or circles. So if I wanted a composition sort of like this, where it would form a certain shape, then I'm going to create a square and I'm going to just round these corners off here. So I want it to kind of be a rounded shape. And then I also want something in the middle. Merge these together and you've basically got a symmetrical composition. If I put a guide down the middle, you can see that each side is symmetrical all the way around. And in having symmetry and balance in your design, it not only makes it look clean and professional, but it also is easier to view what is on there. If you've ever seen design that is not being symmetrical or clean or balanced, then you know that it doesn't look as good. And from this sort of shape, what we can do is start to add other shapes. So if I wanted to, I can add this here. I can add another box here. This itself could be a box. This one could be a box and this could be a box. The reason why we've put boxes inside of the composition shape already is to sort of give us an idea of what it's going to look like in itself. Every word that you write in here will have a bounding box, which is the way that shapes and letters are. If you work in typography, you know that if you have, for instance, the word hello written just like this, you can see there's a box around it. Now, what we're trying to do with creating these shapes is not worry too much about where we put words or typography. We're just worried about making sure that the shape and the composition, the layout of it works nicely. I'm going to create another artboard here and we're going to sort of put this into practice because I know exactly what I want to write. And if you don't know what to write, then there's a really cool way of doing this. So for instance, if the first word that I wanted to was mighty, then I would go ahead and create that. I would choose my typeface, which is Coloss Regular, which is a free font. I'll put it in the description below. If I knew that this was my first typeface here, I would go ahead and create a square around this. And if I knew I had the word contrast in there, I can go ahead and write contrast, but I know it's gonna be smaller, so I can bring it down a bit further. And then I also wanna increase the tracking, which is a little trick that I like to do to give it different weight illusion. So it increases the contrast between this word and this. And now that I've got these words in there, I can create boxes around them. And what we can do within our layout, if we wanted to, is use these boxes instead of the boxes behind it to know where things can go inside of the layout. Okay, so I know that this is my main word here for the logo, and I'm gonna be writing a message, and it's not really a logo, it's more of a typographic illustration or more like a hand-lettered composition, but the same principles apply. Now, instead of creating a straight word here, in this top one, I want to create an arced version. Now, those are really cool to do in Halloween. They're quite difficult to do as well. So when you're an illustrator, it makes it a ton easier to play around with it. What we're going to do is create this circle shape here. I'm going to get rid of the fill because we don't need that, but I want to keep the circle here. I'm going to center it like so. 
and I'm not really worried about where it is right now. I'm going to go to my type options and hold it down. And then on the type on the path tool, I want to click on that. It's going to click somewhere inside of this circle. Now, what you see is that the typography is actually around the circle now. And this is where we're going to start to use it to our benefit to fit that composition. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down a bit like so, because we have a lorem ipsum around it. I'm going to go to my justification and I'm going to justify it centered and then for now i'm just going to press command and shift and move these arrows now you see these little things over here we need to sort of move them to the corners here and one there because we want it to be on the top here i'm going to go to type go to type on the path go to type on the path options and on the baseline i want to hit center and preview and what that does is that it moves the typography and centers it along the path, not on top of the path. I'm going to press OK, and I'm going to just scale this down. As you can see, it doesn't scale down the path, it just scales down the type, so we can create an arc here. And what I'm going to do is in here, I'm going to write the use of great and because this is more of like a hand lettered logo to me and you can see already here we've got a composition starting to show up i'm going to increase mighty just a little bit here and center both of these to the artboard so as you can see if we look at the composition as well of the layout that we previously designed you can see we've got the use of up here and then mighty down here we've got something in the middle there and what i want to do is create basically just the word 2020 so i'll just do 2020 and we're going to scale this down all the way down because sometimes it's nice to have a little date on it. And if you need to fill out a certain part and you don't know what to do, add like a, a date or something like that, which gives it that vintage feeling. Increase the tracking by pressing Alt and then using your right arrow key or left arrow key and make sure that it's centered. Keeping everything centered is important for this. Now, what I want to do again is over here, I want to create contrast. So I'm going to add you out the word contrast. And when I'm looking at this, and this is the same with any layout, it's a principle of design. You can see if I zoom out, the first thing you see is the word mighty and everything else comes less or sort of second or third. But we want to make sure the word mighty is the thing that people are seeing at first. Everything else is information that is is secondary that people don't need to see at first but this thing in the middle or the main hook of the design is whatever you want it to be but it has to have some meaning and importance you don't want contrast to be big and mighty to be small because it just doesn't make sense so with contrast to increase the contrast between mighty and this i'm going to increase the tracking again which looks like this. Now, generally the rule is when the typography is smaller, you want to increase the tracking just a little bit so it can move around the layout easily. So it spreads out a bit without adding too much scale to it. And again, I'm going to go ahead and align this. And we can keep adding and adding to this if we want to, but something that I like to do to create the symmetry at the bottom is a really easy and effective way of copying this down to here. So I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to press command C and command F and that will paste this on front. It won't look like it's done anything, but press R, hold shift and rotate to 180 degrees and you'll see that we've got basically the same thing here. Pull it down to where we want it to be. We don't want it to fit in a perfect circle. Highlight it again, go up to path, type on the path, options, and we're going to press preview and just press flip. When we flip it, it flips it to the way that we can see it, so it reads perfectly again. And because we're talking about design principle, I'm going to say a design principle. And you can see this layout is starting to take shape and it looks good. And the reason why it's within a shape and we're using typography in a clever way so people can read the right things at first. Now, if there's a lot of information you want to get out, we can easily do this. So I'm going to go ahead and get my text tool. And just here, I'm going to write this here. I'm going to decrease the size and I'm going to fill it by right clicking and going fill the placeholder text. Decrease the size again by selecting all of it, decrease. Then we want to fill it with placeholder text, like so, making sure it's justified in the center as well. And we can move this however we need and it will fit perfectly where we need it. And down here, I'm going to add something else because we've got a bit of space there that we need to fill out to keep it symmetrical. And normally when you're doing this for a client or if you're doing this as a project, you want real information. Don't just put random things like I'm doing in here. So bring contrast down, I'm just holding Alt, and basically shift to hold it down. And I'm going to write design co and I'm going to scale it down quite some bit. I want it to be 
not as big or as scaled as contrast and not as small as the Lauren Ipsum, but it needs to fit. Now if I zoom out, I can see if there's any issues. One issue I'm having is this needs to be a bit lower down. So I'm just using my arrow keys here. This needs to be a bit further up. Mighty does not look centered. So I'll just go ahead and make sure that's centered. It could be other things in here. So I'm gonna select everything, center it all like so. That looks better. I'm gonna move design coat up so it fits within the scale that we want it. We can even increase the tracking a bit there and center it again. Now, as you can see, this looks great and all, but the problem is we haven't filled in these sections here. We've got little sections here that need filling in on both left and right. Now you can use design assets or more typography if you wanted to. Something that you can do that looks really cool and it's a nice feature is type vertical. So I can bring contrast over here just as an explanation and go to type, type orientation vertical. Now this is a really good way of adding the symmetry look, but if you don't have anything else you wanna say and you wanna add some shapes, you can. Something that works well with this is kinda of like the American star. Just have like a tiny star here and just bring it over to the right, bring them further out. So that is the final thing. What you can do now is you can put it onto a mock-up. You can make it look older through Photoshop, but something that I would suggest to do is make a copy of it. So select all of it, drag it this way, Alt Shift, and then on your keyboard, highlight all of it again and press Command or Control, Shift and O. And that will create the text into outlines so you don't have all those borders around and it's not as easily changed. A good test to see whether it's a good composition is basically flipping it. So we can flip it by pressing O, Option, and flip vertically like this. And if it looks good, and we just press OK, it looks good and it doesn't look weird vertically the shape then you're all right another way of doing it is going to affect blur i'm going to add a gaussian blur a generous gaussian blur not too much though just generous and what this does is it gives us the ability to see the shape but stops us reading the words so we're not getting distracted by those words so you can see there it works pretty well another way of doing this if you're working on a drawing for instance you just have to squeeze your eyes kind of like that and then you blur everything out it's a weird thing to do but i do it quite a lot to make sure that everything looks good well guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did press that red subscribe button the main thing about it it's layout layout is a huge part of the design process as a designer you'll be given the information information that you need to have on there and it's your job to make it look beautiful through layouts and especially with vintage type you can do this really easily and it's a good way of learning how to know when it's good or bad if you'd like to see more videos like this feel free also remember to check out the discord link down below in the description it's called creative insider i'm on it most days just chatting with you guys thank you to skillshare for sponsoring this video make sure you go click the link if you're the first thousand people to click it then you will get two months for free thanks for watching see you in the next video goodbye